Hi, my name is Ken Paddock. I'm with JoeCrete.com, and we offer a product that specializes in slurry wastewater. We have a product line called the Poseidon Super Absorb and Super Separator, and this product is designed to manage concrete slurry water and wastewater for contractors out in the field. One thing that we all have to adhere to is the EPA regulations, and one of those regulations is called the T-Clip. This is Toxicity Leaching Characteristic Procedure. And what this is, is they test the materials that go to the landfill for any toxic heavy metals. And so what this is, is this is a acid rain test. They take the material, put it in a tumbler, they run acid water over this material for a period of 18 hours. After they're finished, then they drain the water off and test it. Uh, the EPA has uh, testing regulations for eight different heavy metals, and the state of California has an additional nine. And these heavy metals are toxic materials that cannot be entered into the landfill. So not drying up the material. Drying up is not really the key here. It's being compliant with the T-clip. And the super absorb and the super separator is designed specifically to handle the encapsulation of heavy metals and to provide proper transmission of this material to the landfill while meeting the T-clip regulations. So it's very important to understand that not every product that's on the market can say this, but Joe Creech products can. So for this demonstration, um, I'm going to show you the three different slurry types. So you can see in these containers we have what would be a light polish, a medium grind and polish, and then a heavy polish. So the slurry contents are different, and the products behave a little bit different depending on the actual solid content. So as you see as I add the water, there's a plume of dust that just comes up. That's silica. And this is what we're trying to keep your uh, workers safe from. Okay, so right now we're mixing up the slurry water. Um, in your demo kit, you have a container that's a little bit different shape here. And what it's designed to do is to allow you to decant the water and keep the solids in there. But you want to be able to stir this up, and you can use your spoon or stir kit to do this. But what I'm doing right now is just agitating the slurry to create uh, slurry water that's identical that's out there in the field. Now that you have your slurry created, you want to take out your pH tester and you want to be able to test the, the uh, pH of this water. So you stip, typically just dip your stick into the, uh, the water and as you will see here, the fourth row down, this little red bar right here, so this indicates this, the pH of the water. So right now we're at the highest level. It's probably registering at a 12 or 13. Uh, it, it doesn't register above 13, so that's the highest. So this material here is not compliant for uh, being disposed in the sewer or onto the ground. So I'm going to show you how to use the separator to remove the slurry and get a balanced pH. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just a small little teaspoon of this material. Not a lot is very needed. It's anywhere from two to four grams of material per gallon. So in this particular case, we don't need a lot. So we're going to just add a little bit of the separator into the first container and you're going to want to stir this around. So the more you agitate this material, the more the flocculation process happens. And the flocculation process is where the betonite clay is swelling and it is creating the pozzolanic attraction. That's the positive and negative reaction that's happening here. Like little magnets right now running around. And as you stir this up, you want to make sure you have good agitation. And then as we sit here and we let it run, you'll see that it's instantly grabbing the cement solids and it's precipitating it to the bottom. Um, as this m moves more and more, you'll see that it'll start to swell and get bigger and bigger. So another round of this agitation will increase the flocculation size. Again, grabbing more and more of the solids and helping it precipitate and providing clear water at the top. And so this right here is demonstrating the light polish. This is what is uh, maybe at 800 grit, 1500 grit wet polish. This is the type of uh, water that you would have left over. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and test the pH in this material here. We want to see what this looks like first before we move on to the next slurry sample. And again, you take your test strip, dump it into the water. And as you look now, now we are on the fourth strap here, and we are now down to a low pH. 
So this is acceptable for dumping into the sewer system for two reasons. One, the pH is lowered. So this material now is, is compliant. The pH we tested was an acceptable range and the turbidity level, which is the water clarity, is clean enough to dump down the sewer. So this really is a, is a powerful process for eliminating the amount of waste during a light polish project. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the second one, which is a medium uh, grind, which is a grinding and polishing process. So I'm going to stir the slurry up just to make sure that we can get a full effect of what this looks like. So this material here, so now we're going to use uh, the, about the same dosage rate, just a very small amount. It's not doesn't take very much, but our solid contents are a little bit higher in this material. And the reason for showing you the different solid uh, types is the expectation of what the product can do. So the separator can separate out um, as, as much solids as it can from the H2O or the fresh water. The challenge is, is not this material may not have enough water in it to actually separate. So when we look at the ability to reduce the solids, you can see this material is, is not dropping as fast as the original one. And that's because the solid contents are higher. So there's a recommended use of the products for this type of stuff. So this material here may not make sense that you want to separate it. Uh, it may not be enough water in here to actually get an acceptable amount that you could decant. Yes, you can get some water off of it, but maybe not enough. So this particular method would be strictly straight absorb. Uh, you want to be able to absorb this material and get rid of it and not really be concerned about the actual water being removed. So it may be worth separating or it may not. So that would be the judgment call from the contractor. So as you agitate this second sample here, you'll see that the flocculation has occurred and it's done a pretty good job of precipitating all the solids to the bottom. Now you see that the solid content is a lot higher in here. Yes, we are able to remove some of the water. So this may be uh, a product that you want to, maybe you want to use the separator for this as well than the absorb. So let's check the pH on this. And so if we look here, the pH here is a little bit higher. Um, we've got a higher uh, pH count because there was more solids in this. And so this is still acceptable for disposal in sewer. And if you look at the amount of separation that we have is, you know, three quarters of that is actually water that could be disposed of. So this would make sense to use the separator in this application. Okay, and the last one, this next one is the heavy grind, uh, saw cutting, coring. This is where you have very thick slurry paste. In fact, you may even have something that may be a little bit thicker than this. And this particular product here, the separator may or may not provide adequate separation. And so we'll give this a try and see what the solid contents look like on this. Now you're going to need to use a little bit more separator because there's a little bit more solids in this material here, but not very much. Most of this stuff is you're using a teaspoon of material to maybe a teaspoon and a half. So continuing to stir this material uh, increases the flocculation, which is the, the attraction of the cement particles to the bentonite clay. So at this point you can see now, now we've got about half and half on this material. Uh, there's probably more often you'll have maybe even less water if the slurry is too thick. So this, this method here, Maybe something that you want to use a separator, but I typically suggest using strictly the absorb product when the slurry is too thick. If you can imagine a wet sponge and trying to squeeze out a bunch of water out of a sponge, you're only going to get so much moisture. So it may not make sense to separate this, but in this particular case, it looks like maybe we have 50-50 on the separation. And again, let's test the pH on this one. This one had a higher solid content in here. And this may or may not have been adjusted. And if we look at this, we can see that we have an adjustment to this, which is acceptable for proper disposal down a sewer or on the ground. At John Don, we got it all. 
Did you know that 98% of the orders that are placed by 5 p.m. Central Standard Time are actually shipped out the same day? That means you really get your products fast. But even more important than that is our 30-day, 100% guaranteed money-back offer that says, you're not happy? Send it back to us within 30 days. We refund your money 100%. No questions asked, no hassles, no red tape. That's the way we do business at John Dunn. And I appreciate you watching this video.